Welcome to this instructional video. We'll be showing you how to complete the 2022 Ringtail Tally using ArcGIS Survey123 web app and the field app. This year we have integrated the Ringtail Tally online and through the field app to reduce paper, to make it easier for people completing the tally and to improve accuracy as you can log individual possum locations and watch those locations being recorded live on the dashboard. There are five ringtail possum catchments that are participating in the ringtail tally. Once you have registered to participate in the tally, you'll receive a PDF and the PDF has all the links you need to complete the tally using Survey123. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are. We've got our PDF instructions for Survey123. Uh, we'll start off with the website and web app for completing the ringtail tally on this section of the PDF. So the benefit of using the website over the field app is that it, you can do it on your desktop, so it's uh, a much larger screen. Uh, the benefit of using the, mo the field mobile app is that you can use location services to send to yourself when you're standing in the field and you can record possum locations as you see them while you're walking around your survey site. So we'll start off with the website. The first thing we need to do is complete the contact and site registration. Okay, so this is the first survey we need to complete. We only need to do this once. So Google Chrome might ask you to give your location and you can allow or disallow that. Um, I find that it doesn't help a whole lot, so it doesn't really matter either way, but it would help if you're on a device in the field. So the first thing we need to complete is uh, what section, what catchment we're in. So I'll try with Pill Yalgrup region. And then if you're completing the survey as part of a school group, uh, as a specific organisation, then you can write that in here. But if you're just doing it as a solo in your uh, backyard or in a, your local reserve, then you can just write down your name or if you're doing it as part of a group, the leader or teacher of the group can write in this section. So if you're completing the ringtail tally at a bush reserve, at your local reserve, you can write that name in here or a school. Uh, but today I'll just do it as part of a backyard survey. move on to the next section. Okay, so this section here is where we are going to be filling out our survey area where we're going to co conduct our survey. So if you already know the area, uh, you've stepped it out, uh, you can input your area in this next section here, area of your survey. So if you've estimated that it's 15 metres by 15, then you can put 225 in here as the metres squared. Otherwise, you can measure it on here. Uh, it also helps with accuracy. And also this will be used um, from the project managers managing the, the ringtail tally to monitor ringtails being observed for that site. So if you want to map your survey location. The first thing you need to do is click on this expand button on the left hand panel and that's just going to make the map a bit bigger. And the next thing we need to do is navigate to our site. So you can use the negative and positive zoom buttons here or you can use your mouse scroll wheel by scrolling up or down. So I'll just continue with the scrolling out 
with the negative button here to scroll out, zoom out. And what we'll see here is some orange dots and our catchment boundaries who are participating in the tally. So these orange dots are actually ringtail possum locations that other people have logged. And we'll get onto that in our next survey. So to zoom in, we click the plus button again. And to pan, so by doing that, what I'm doing is I'm clicking with my left click and I'm pulling or dragging the map. And that'll help me navigate to our survey site about this close. Okay, so if this is my property, all around here, this fire break demarcates the property boundaries. I'm only going to be doing a survey that's accessible and in a smaller area, perhaps in my backyard. So I'm only going to draw I, the boundary of the survey area of an area that's accessible and that I will be searching for ringtails in. So you only need to draw a line around that area. If you're looking in your whole property, then you can draw a line around your whole property. Perhaps you've got front yard trees and backyard trees. All right, so to, to draw a polygon around our search area, we need to click on the right here on this polygon button. And what we're going to do is every corner of the search area, we're going to drop. We're going to click. So on our left click, this is the start of our search area. We're going to use an, a left click. And then we're just going to move our mouse across to make another corner of our survey search area and click with our left click again and drag the mouse down. So you don't need to click as you're moving your mouse, you just need to move the mouse around and then I'll just click for each corner of our survey site. And when you're finished, you can double click. Okay, so if you're happy with that, you can click on the cross button up in the top right hand corner if that's your if you're happy with that. If you're not happy with it, then you can use the trash can over here and we'll just redo that because it wasn't happy with the kite shape survey area. So left click for each corner. So I'm just going to do my backyard here, this little search area that I will be looking in. And then to, dub, to finish the polygon, I'm just going to double click with the left click and then we'll get a solid blue line. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. And we just look down here and it's 8,789 square metres. That's the area of the site. So once I'm happy, I can cross out of that. And then what we need to do is scroll down and we can input this number calculated from the map into this area. And that was calculated from the map. Again, you can override that if you, if you like, if you haven't drawn your polygon. Description of a survey site. So it's a semi-rural house. And previously I've counted the number of trees on the block and I estimate that to be 150. So if you're conducting your ringtail tally at a nature reserve, perhaps it's not very well known, then it's a good idea to write down the nearest crossroad or some other identification marker in this area, just to make it easier to identify. And this is really important if you haven't drawn a polygon to identify your survey site. But since that I've done a polygon and I've written down a specific street address, I'm going to leave this section blank. And then it's a good idea just to check before you submit, peel Yagra up all these other sections, you're happy with that. Double check the area. And then once you're happy with it, you can submit. And that's it. You only need to do that once for the ringtail tally, unless you're doing multiple sites. So you'll need to repeat this survey for every site that you're going to conduct the ringtail tally survey at. 
we're going to complete our ringtail tally evening survey sheet. So you can do this on, a, on the website and um, perhaps you have conducted your ringtail tally the night before uh, and or even earlier this evening and then you've come back to your desktop to input the tally data on this sheet. So that's what the desktop survey sheet is good for. Otherwise, if you had the field app, you could complete this in the field standing next to the possum and you could input the location there. Otherwise, you can do it at a later stage on the web app. So the data is tied to your information. You just need to complete these initial sections again. So here we are, go up. Okay, so remember last night we've completed our tally or earlier this evening, but for the, for the purposes of today, we'll just pretend that we did it last night. So this will pre-populate to today's date. If, you, if it's not correct and we want to input the tally for yesterday, then we'll just click on the calendar and find the correct date. And we need to update the time as well. So we just click in the time field and update the time. That's all correct. Okay, so it's important that we write down the time of the survey. So you might have spent five minutes having a search in your backyard, and then you might have gone inside to do some chores, and then you might have come back out to do another five or ten minutes. So it's important to calculate the total time that you spent searching for ringtails. Also, if you didn't see any ringtails over your survey time, it's very important to put a zero. Zero is just as important as uh, observation records of ringtails. Okay, so this section here is optional. Uh, it's for where you can log individual locations of, of ringtails. If you're not savvy with um, doing your map, you can scroll on down to the total number of ringtails seen for the evening. So last night we saw four ringtails. So we're just going to put down four. And you can just skip the mapping section if you're not savvy with the, with the mapping and then you can continue on the survey. But for now, we're going to just run through that mapping section and this will help locate each and every possum that is logged in the ringtail tally. So the first step we need to do with the map is to expand it on the left-hand panel. And then we need to navigate to our site again. So we can use the negative and positive to zoom out and then to pan, again, we click the map and drag up. So again, we can see some ringtail possums that have already been logged in the Peel Yagra up section of the Peel Harvey catchment. And we're just going to zoom in to our little, find our little area. So instead of using the plus and negative, you can always use your scroll wheel on your mouse to go up and down. All right, so this is our little patch that we're going to be surveying and to drop a possum where we saw a possum last night zoom in as far as you can go and we're going to log a possum that we found in this tree so to do that we simply left click and that'll drop a waypoint right where that possum was found if we're happy with that we can cross out of it in the top right, otherwise we can trash can it and start again. And it was actually in this tree we found it. So once we're happy with that, we'll cross it. And that's the location of our first possum. It's a good idea for each possum that you find to put a little note next to it, just for your benefit to, when you go back to look at all your records, to remember that possum that you 
logged. So I'm just going to put down here, it had particularly copper fir. And that's just for a little reminder for me that that was a copper fir possum. All right, so that's our first possum logged. And that's why we've got a number one up here. So for the next possum, we need to press the plus button. So next to the one, we've got a little, this is uh, on the, the web app. We just press number one, press the plus button. And we scroll back down to the map. And then we click the expand. And then we need to navigate back to our side again. Quickest way is to use your scroll wheel to zoom out. And then you can drag down and find your site. So the next possum is in this tree. So we're just going to drop a pin with our left click. If we're happy with that, we can cross out of it. And we put a note down there that that one had a missing ear. All right. So we've done two possums up to our third. And we're going to expand the map. This next possum is found near the road in this tree. I'm going to drop a pin there. And it was actually a mother ringtail. We know it was a mother because it had a, a little back rider baby possum on its back. That's our third possum. Always checking up here the number of possum. And we'll just write down in the notes section, mother had a back rider so we need to also record that one so that'll be our fourth possum click the plus sign and that was right near the road and it was on its mum's back in this tree here so if we're happy with that we cross out of it and we'll just write in the notes it's very important to write down if it's a back rider or a young ringtail in the notes And if it's a young ringtail with its mother, you can write that in the notes there. That's that's quite important. All right, so that's it for the evening. We've done our four possums. We've logged them all. Happy with that. Now what we need to do is double check. So we've got the total number of ringtails. This is automatically calculated as four. So it's counted all four that we've inputted. And what we need to do is just just check them. So we to do that, we just click on each number up here to check the location. Yep, that was correct. Remembering that it had copper fur, missing ear, mother, and back rider. So if we're happy with that, if we're not happy with that, you can always use the trash can and that'll delete one of your possum locations and you can start again or or edit it. If you want to edit it, you can just click on the map by expanding it. If you're clicked on that possum to edit that number, to edit the location. All right, so over the evening, I spent 15 minutes total. I uh, went out for five minutes a bit earlier in the evening and then another 10 minutes uh, later in the evening. So a total of 15 minutes. I'll just record that there and when I was walking around I did see a few drays in the trees so I'll click yes now it's important that we check our form before we click submit so just go back up and make sure we've clicked through each one of these to double check especially the number the total number so there's four ringtails there and we've checked that the total number says four down here. If you had zero, you just need to make sure that this says zero down here and that you have no possums logged up here. All right, so we've checked and then we're ready to submit. So that's it for one evening. Uh, you can might, might like to do eight or more or less. 
surveys throughout the, the ringtail period. And to get back into the survey, we just go back to our PDF sheet and click on the link again. Once you've completed every single one of your evening surveys on the evening tally survey sheet, you'll need to complete your additional information. All right, so here we are. And again, to link the information, we just need to complete this, these first few sections again. All right, now it's asking if we've seen any dead ringtails this year. Unfortunately, I did see one on the side of the road next to the property. And I did see that someone's cat did take a ringtail. So I'll just put one there, the cat. And then just check that the total number here is correct for two. So it's adding up all the ringtails that you've seen. Um, if you don't see any, then you can just leave it as all zero. That's fine. And I don't provide any ringtail food for the ringtails. So I've just leave that section blank. And I have noticed that ringtails have been feeding on the avocado trees on the property. So I'll just put down here avocados. And any other comments? So the location of the dead ringtails, I did notice that that was one on the side of the road. So I could put down the location as Old Coast Road. All right, so good idea to just check that you've everything's correct. Check the total. And then you can submit. Okay, so we're ready to start our tutorial on the Survey123 field app. Uh, the first thing we need to do is download the app. So you can go to your Google Play or App Store on your mobile device and type in Survey123. You can type ArcGIS if you like, and then you can download it there. The next thing you'll need to do is open up your PDF that was supplied to you from your catchment group, otherwise you can find it online. And then you can, once you've downloaded the, the app, you don't need to sign in, but what we'll need to do is download the survey. So there's two ways you can do that. The first one, the first one is you're using the QR code reader. So just on the search bar on the right hand side, there's a little QR code, so you can tap that. And then you can hover over the, your computer screen where you've got the contact and site registration QR code, and that will download your survey for you. Sometimes, depending on the phone, that won't work. So the next option you can do is open your browser on your phone. So you might have Safari or some other internet browser and you can type in the URL that's provided on the PDF to download the survey. And it will ask you to open it in the app and then you can just press yes. And then you'll have downloaded your contact and site registration. The next thing you need to do is if you are wanting to complete your contact and site registration in the field, then you'll just need to turn location services on and this will help you if you're standing in the field at your site. Otherwise, you can complete this survey at home without location services turned on. But to do that, if we wanted to, you can just go to your settings and in this I've got an iPhone here. In the settings, just type in privacy and then it comes up with location services. So you just tap that and then you scroll down to find all your apps that you have and then you can tap survey123 and then you can click while using the app. 
So I'll run through at the end about how to turn this off because once you've completed each survey, it's a good idea just to turn this off so it's not running in the background. So we'll just go back now to our app. I'm just pressing the home button to get back to our app. And here we are back to our contact and site registration. So we need to, to tie our data back to ourselves and our site. We need to fill out these sections here. So our street address and site name, if you're doing it at a reserve or a primary school, you can put that down uh, or you can just put down, if you're doing it in your backyard, you can just put down your backyard. But for today, we'll be doing it at a local reserve. Okay, so I'm completing my contact and site registration from another location so I'm not standing on site so I've actually turned off my location services so and you can do this at home before you go out to conduct your tally if you like so what we need to do at home or in the field is calculate the area of the site so if you already know the area of your site you can head on down to this section here and type out perhaps you've pasted out to um, with you know walking around your area to find out that it's 15 by 15 meters and so you can just type in the area straight in there but if you want to calculate it using a map uh, it's a bit more accurate and also it'll help uh, project managers uh, managing the back end of the ringtail tally if you are uh, if you map it. So um, to in order to map it, you can click on that little map there and it'll open up a, a map for us to navigate to our site. So you can do this in the field or at home. The It'll always centre around Bustleton. So you just need to navigate to your site. So the way I like to do it is to zoom out and to do that you just pinch the map with your fingers and I just zoom out like this. And then to move the map, I just use one finger to tap on the map and then move it, so drag it down to navigate to your site. So my site is on the Collie River today. And again, I'm doing this at home before the ringtail tally starts. So you can do this whenever you like. It's just best, you need to complete it before you start your tally. All right, so make sure you have zoomed to your, you can see the whole extent of your site. And then when you're ready, you can draw a polygon around the site. So what we need to do is we need to tap the bottom left. There's a little polygon there. And when it starts flashing, that means it's active. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap on the map all around the, every for every corner on the, map we're going to tap and that will help us draw a line all the way around our survey site. So when you've finished it'll have that little red dot and that'll finish the whole polygon and if you're happy then you can press the tick with the polygon in the bottom right hand corner and if you want to if you want to have another go then you can use the back button to edit your points, edit, edit your points again. All right, so there we have it. So in this next field, you can use your calculated area to type in there. So we have 9914, 9914 square metres. If it's over a hectare, uh, it will show as a hectare on there and then you'll need to convert it to metres squared to, to, to type in this, to this section. 
that's only if you're doing reserves but in backyards uh, you can just it'll be much smaller and it just needs to display in meters squared so if you're doing your backyard it's just important to highlight to draw the polygon around the area that you'll be surveying so only areas that have ringtail possums and that you'll be surveying in so you may not need to include your front yard for example in the polygon so now we're up to the description of the survey site so I'm doing a public reserve so I'll just put down native bushland and I'm not conducting my tally at a site so I don't need to indicate the number of trees but if I did I just put my backyard and front yard trees in there the number if you haven't drawn a polygon or you have you're using a site that's maybe less um, not as well known then you can put the nearest crossroad or some other identification marker in this section but because we've drawn a polygon and written a, a, a the location name that'll be much easier for managers managing the data in the background and so we're good to go we can submit and then we can press send now and we're done so you can check by tapping on the, the survey in your menu of the app and you'll see that it's been sent so we know that that's done and you can complete that for each survey site that you are conducting the ringtail tally at. So you're allowed to repeat that one just for a different site. If you're just using the one site, you only need to do that once. It's important to, once you have finished doing the ringtail tally contact and site registration, you might like to turn off your location services. So to do that, we just go back into settings and in the search bar we can type privacy location services scroll down to your app survey one two three and just tick never if this is on a iPhone for example you can just type never and then you can turn that back on again when you're ready to use the app again Okay, now we're ready to do the tally survey sheet. So there's two ways that we can go about that. The first one is to use our QR code reader on the app. So in the search bar on the app, on the right hand side, there's a little, hack, a little QR code. We can use that one to scan the PDF on our desktop screen for to download for use later in the field. If that doesn't work for you, you can use the evening tally sheet link there that's also in the PDF and type it into your browser on your phone in Safari, for example, on an iPhone or any other browser, and that will open up straight into the survey sheet. So you can exit that survey sheet and keep it in your uh, in your da survey downloads for when you're out in the field. All right, so when we're ready to start in the field, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have turned on location services. And I have, you can skip back to the step one contact and site registration to see how you turn on your local location services for the app specifically. And that'll help you to locate possums that you're, you're finding as you walk along in your survey site. So to start the tally survey sheet, we can fill out our catchment, name, email and site address. The date and the time, it automatically populates. And the next thing we need to do is start a timer. So we need to, it's a timed survey, so every, at the whole time that we're searching for ringtails, it doesn't matter if we've found any, but the immediate time that we start looking for, for ringtails and then when we finish we need to 
record that time. So what I do is I use my phone timer. If you're going to be um, doing the survey all at once, then you can use your phone timer. Otherwise, you can record the time in increments that you might be doing it over one night. So the next thing we need to do is map our possums. So if you're familiar with the mapping process, you can um, map individual locations. If it, if it seems a bit overwhelming, you can skip ahead and just type the total number of ringtails that you found over the evening in the next section. But we'll just run through a tutorial of how to map individual possums. So you click on the little map and it will bring you, if you've got your location services turned on, it will bring you to a little drop pin of where, where you're standing on site. And you'll see the accuracy on the right hand side in the little, uh, you'll see a little marker there, little dot, and that's got the, the meters of the, the accuracy that the, the GPS is using to find your location. If you're standing next to the possum, uh, you, it'll send to you where you are. So if on different devices, uh, if the GPS isn't all that good, you might get like 67 or 65 meters. So uh, accuracy, so you may have to just move the map around with your finger to locate exactly where you are. If the GPS isn't finding you where you're standing it's and that's incorrect but in my case five meter, uh, 4.7 meters is is quite good accuracy so once you are happy with that location you can click the tick button in the bottom right hand corner and now you have logged your ringtail possum for the night it's a good idea to write a note for each ringtail possum that you find and the benefit of that is for your your benefit to remember that that was one of your possums and where it was so you can use the the a distinguishing feature of the possum or you could use perhaps the species of tree that it's in or any other um distinguishable features about that specific possum so that just helps you when you're reviewing at the end to remember each of the possums and it's really important if it's a young or a, a, a back rider on a mother that you write down if it's a back rider, a young or a, um, a mother ringtail. When you're ready to submit your next possum, it's got one of one there, we'll just hit the plus button to add another possum. So when you're walking around in the field, it's a good idea to wait uh, until you're, you've walked up and found another possum before you hit the plus button. But if you do, you can always just uh, wait till it centres yourself uh, next to the possum before you hit submit. We need to click the map to map that possum. Again, we've got some a good accuracy there and we could submit that we're happy with it. We just need to write a note in for this one. So this one was found in a casuarina tree. And then we'll walk along a bit further, see what possums we can find. And now we'll add our third possum. So this time, click the map to map the, the possum. This time it's a mother ringtail. We know it's a mother because it's got a back rider on its back. So you can click that little arrow there and it will change the direction that you're looking in. And so we're just going to make a note on this one that it's a mother ringtail. It's really important that you do record those notes. And because it's a mother ringtail with a back rider, we need to record the back rider separately. So we'll just do that now. We're still standing in the same location, so it's got us there and then we'll submit that one and we'll just write down back rider so that's all of our possums 
for the night. To calculate the total number, because it'll calculate it for us, we just need to click that little um, refresh button on the right, and that'll give us the total number. Right, so now it's asking us for the time of our survey. So what we need to do is we need to go back to our timer in, in our phone and it's got 25 minutes that we've been searching. So I, I've completed my survey all at once. That's the completion of the survey and it's total 25 minutes. Did we see any, any evidence? And yes, we did see some drays at the site, so I'll just tick yes. And it's important to go back and check your possums and your survey form. So we've got catchment, contact details, date and time that we started and our possum. So if it's, you can use the little arrow on the left there to go through all those possums. You don't need to open the map, just check that the notes are correct. So that all looks correct. If it's incorrect, you can use the trash can. And then if all looks good, then you happy. Yes, I've checked and then submit. And you can send it straight away. And there'll be a record of that saved in our sent items. So we can always see that we know how many surveys we've done throughout the period. Okay, so we've made it to the end of the ringtail tally period. So you've done all of your ringtail tally evening surveys, and then you can complete this section. You don't need location services turned on for this survey. So the first thing you need to do is scan the QR code on your PDF, or you can use your link provided in the PDF um, through your browser to open the survey. And then you'll need to complete your catchment and contact and site information. So the next section is about have you seen any deceased ringtails throughout the year inside or outside the survey site. So this year, unfortunately, I did see a possum attacked by a dog. So I'll just put number one in that section. And when you click in the other field or in the total field, that should sum up all of your deceased ringtails that you've observed. Just check that that's correct. And then we'll move on to feeding ringtails. So if you've provided any food to ringtails, you can just indicate what you've fed them there. But for today, we haven't fed any ringtails, so we're just gonna leave it blank. So have you seen any ringtails feeding on any other sources in the, on the property? So if you're doing the survey at home, you may have noticed them eating some fruit trees, for example. And so we've just noted, noticed they've been eating lily pillies and we'll just put that in there. All right, we also noticed an owl during our survey site. So we'll just put that down and you can also put the location of the deceased ringtails if you have found any then you're ready to submit and then you can send straight away. So that's that's all you need to do for the ringtail tally. And we hope this instructional video will help you out and happy surveying.